Hey guys, thanks for watching. What I wanted to do for you guys today was create a, a vlog or video blog on my mycotoxin and chronic illness post for you guys. Reading isn't everyone's forte nowadays. We're really busy, so some of us prefer to watch the content in video form, which I'm gonna do for you guys today because the information I found on psychiatric illnesses connected to hidden stealth infections was mind blowing to me even. And so I really want this information shared. And so what I wanna to talk to you guys about starting out today is about how mental illnesses, things like anxiety, depression, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, um, or even chronic fatigue are linked to hidden infections, heavy metals, and other environmental toxicities. And often this runs in pairs or triplets. So if you have one, you might have another. And there's oftentimes co-infections involved. It's really good on top of the body's immune system, immune system and ability to fight. And so if you read my blog, you know how important the information is. Let's just start by saying um, I find this quite relevant. And whether it's um, causal or coincidental, remains to be seen, but about 20% of the population is diagnosed with some sort of psychiatric diagnosis or illness in this country, according to the DSM-4, which is a psychiatric manual. Um, interestingly enough, about 25% of people have the genetic predisposition or haplotype um, that makes them uh, more susceptible to SIRS or mycotoxin illness or chronic inflammatory response syndrome. So, um, very interesting since we're now connecting mold to type 3 Alzheimer's. So if you guys don't know, Alzheimer's is um, a really painful way to go. It's cognitive decline and dementia caused by beta amyloid plaques or TA plaques that form the brain. And we really don't know why this happened for years and years and years. And they also call Alzheimer's type 3 diabetes because of the leaky brain, leaky gut connection that goes with that. However, multiple studies have now revealed um, fungal macro micromolecules in the brain of Alzheimer's patients, even um, parasitic infections in the brains of patients, as well as some herpes infections, and even some odd um, anaerobic bacteria that grows in the mouth. So they're linking a lot of these chronic health conditions to hidden infections, so it's really important information. Not only that, guys, but seriously, like, let's just take it in stride here. If anyone knows about Lyme disease, this is more common than breast cancer. Lyme disease has a predisposition towards psychiatric um, illnesses and um, problems. As people go on with uh, chronic Lyme, it can get actually in the cranial cavity and nervous system of these patients and really cause um, problems with temperature control, um, emotions, anxiety, depression. And most of my Lyme patients, when I am detoxing them, can become suicidal because of the toxic byproducts that the spirochetes produce. They also are corkscrew shaped, so they burrow into the brain, into the cranial tissue, um, and can hide there. And so many people say, well, why don't we know about Lyme? Why don't doctors believe in chronic Lyme? And that's because they use a standard blood test called the ELISA, which misses about 60 to 70 percent of patients. It's got a lot of false negatives. And then the confirmatory test, which is a Western blot, is more sensitive and specific, but it's the confirmatory test. So if you miss with the first test, they don't get the second one. So um, these spirochetes don't spirochete bacteria do not hide in the blood. They're in the mucous membranes, the lymph. Um, they do not hide there. So when you test there, you're not going to find them. Um, a lot of times these tests will have people sweat um, somehow, shake them loose from the tissues, and then go urinate and catch the actual direct spirochetes that way. That's a very re um, reliable test nowadays um, on top of the Western blot or iogenics test. And what you'll find with Lyme disease is people suffer from heavy psychiatric problems, um, especially during the detox phase, um, and are tired all the time. If you look at things like schizophrenia, these patients have um, anti-gleed and antibodies. That means they produce antibodies, their body's reacting to gluten, actually, um, and they have high, high gluten insensitivity, or it's gluten, yeah, gluten insensitivity, and can't tolerate gluten. So um, this is just quite interesting how everything ties back to the microbiome and hidden infections. Um, on top of that, you think about um, cat litter boxes. So they actually tell women who are pregnant not to clean cat litter boxes because if you do have lowered immunity, you're at risk for things like toxoplasmosis, which is this obligatory parasite that you can get from cat feces. And it actually, again, burrows into the brain and is linked in some of the studies to, again, schizophrenia. So are these actual, you know, just disorders that people have? You know, they're crazy and there's no reason for it. Here's this pill for the rest of your life. Is that as good as we can give to the mental health community? I don't think so. 
Um, you know, think about a cat or a pet dog or something that gets ill. And sometimes they'll retreat to the corner of a closet or a hallway and you guys won't find them for a while. And when you finally find them, they're actually a little aggressive or violent with you, really out of character or temperament for what they normally are. Do you guys take your cat or dog and put them on a pill and say, oh, they're just depressed? They must be schizophrenic. Um, no, we actually take them to the vet or somebody capable and say they have sick syndrome. Um, there's something wrong. There's an infection. Please find it. There's a toxicity somewhere. Please find it. And we just don't allot the same courtesy to humans. We slap a label on them and say, we don't know why, and that's good enough. And I just refuse to believe that. If you do um, look at studies on autopsy brains of bipolar patients, they found HHV6, which is a herpes family virus, in the brains of autopsy patients. If you look at Epstein-Barr virus, they actually... Um, linked a study, I think back in 2016 out of Cincinnati, to, they linked it to seven different autoimmune conditions. Things like celiac disease, um, you know, juvenile diabetes, um, really important things that we don't have answers for. They link to this virus and how it can actually hijack our immune system in perpetuity. So this is really important information for people to know when they're not given it by the allopathic medical system. And, and so I want you guys to understand that we have reasons people have dementia. We have reasons people are bipolar. We have reasons people are depressed or anxious. And it always starts with the guts, hidden infections, heavy metals, or environmental toxicities. So if you guys want to know more, um, there's ways to test. And Great Plains Lab is a great place to start. It's www.greatplainslaboratory.com. Um, you can actually go there, order the organic acids test, which is a test for nothing, but gives us so many different information and rabbit holes to go down. Um, you can also look at their uh, glyphosate test, their heavy metals test for hair. Their, um, they actually have a um, mycotox test for mold as well. You can also do blood work for mold, things like um, VEGF, MSH, um, TGF beta, there's all kinds, C4A, there's all kinds of blood work you can do to test for mold under the Shoemaker protocol. And finally, you can test a test for mold with using a Marcon's nasal swab, which um, links coagulative staph aureus to biotoxin illness and mold in the nose as well. So there's lots of different ways to find out what's going on with you. Um, and don't give up because a lot of doctors don't know how to read this. So if I'm a Lyme literate doctor, someone trained in the Shoemaker protocol or eyelids or mold, so you guys can find out what's wrong. Because my core belief system is that we aren't born sick. There's nothing wrong with our bodies. We have mutations passed down from our parents or grandparents that are also from environmental toxicities. If we have something happen to us in this life, it's not that our body hates us or you're imperfect. It's that it's screaming something's wrong. And we live in a very, very toxic world. I mean, there's dioxins and pesticides and tampons that we stick in our bodies. Um, there's it's the standard American diet, chock full of high fructose corn syrup, and again, glyphosate, um, which, you know, you mix with aluminum that comes in vaccines or other, um, toxic heavy metals and that forms binds uh, together to form a barrier a barrier that goes past our gut um, and can actually get in the bloodstream get in the brain get in the kidneys where you have high blood flow and cause problems so you know we live in a very toxic world and it's good to know what toxicities your body's holding on to so you can see where some of your chronic health conditions come from um, I don't believe in slapping a pill on anything guys right we have to find root causes and there are reasons for this so don't let your regular doctor or not listen to how you feel. If you have insomnia, chronic fatigue, depersonalization, you don't feel like yourself, eye floaters, brain fog, tinnitus or ear ringing, um, teeth, even root canals are a huge source of biotoxin illness. So please guys, you know, think about the things that have been put in your body. Think about your symptoms. They're not normal just because a doctor doesn't know what caused them. So especially with mental illness, I want you guys to investigate how um, infections can really cause um, problems later on that aren't even thought about. 99% of doctors will not think to look for mold if your grandparent presents with Alzheimer's. 99% um, of doctors won't um, believe um, that you have chronic Lyme disease unless they've been trained. And so you guys really need to become your own best advocate or healthcare provider here to find out um, what is wrong with your body and don't let anyone tell you you're crazy. So finally, how do you treat this once you've been diagnosed? Well, if you guys know, we're actually trademarking my Killbind Sweat Protocol. So um, you guys are going to see a lot of that. Um, mold is an acellular, multicellular um type of uh, pathogen that forms hyphae in the body and it often spins the immune system down so much that there's co-infections like candida um, or even Lyme and tick-associated illnesses. So um, 
you know, with that being said, you really need to kill with natural anti-herbals, bind with things like activated charcoal, zeolite like clay, I have a binder coming soon, um, and then sweat for at least 30 minutes a day to remove these mycotoxins or other co-infections. Um, on top of that, guys, I just want to tell a really brief case study before I go, um, and then we'll move on. So um, basically, I want to let you guys know that um, I do have a patient who came to me um, in a consult a few weeks ago and was complaining about... Um, having Lyme symptoms and biotoxin illness symptoms. And when I talked to her further, she'd had a room full of bed bugs for many years. And she really reacted more than anyone else in her family. So it wasn't a priority for anyone else. Um, but she had welts and huge sores and swellings all over her body, which um, ended up... Um, being Lyme disease because there's multiple papers and actually one in particular in 1984 that was written that shows Lyme can be transmitted not just by ticks, but there are other vectors like bed bugs, mosquitoes, um, so fleas. So it's actually how well is your immune system developed and holding up? How well can they resist these forces that are all around us, these um, pathogens that are all around us all the time? So um, have the faith, guys. You know, kill mind sweat. You want to look at things um, like ozone, things like coffee enemas or colonics. You really want to rev your detox pathways up um, and really tailor anti-herbals and um, other secondary necessary medications to support the immune system to the patient. So I hope that helps. Um, I hope you guys learned a little bit. And um, thanks for watching. Um, and talk to you guys next time.